Welcome back to the CSIR. It's the International Science Forum that's taking place. It's the second time that the forum is happening here in South Africa. And uh, it's fantastic to see all these scientific minds gathering under one roof. Lots of people gathering from all over the world and the continent, which is so nice. I'm standing right next to the Botswana Institute for Technology Research and Innovation. Uh, there's the Data Science for Impact and Decision Enablement. This is the exhibition part of the uh, of this uh, forum, but obviously there's a there's rooms where there's speakers and discussions taking place, and and lots of innovation is being showcased here and international ideals. I mean, it was quite interesting to hear about the New Zealand study when it came to the minimum wage of three and a half thousand rand uh, for here here in South Africa, but how New Zealand dealt with the implementation of the uh, the minimum wage. So that all really falls under the the issue of social sciences, and social sciences is what this year's theme revolves around. So it's quite interesting to see how science impacts every single aspect of our lives, whether we know it or not. Now, we all know that South Africa is at a deficit when it comes to academic, industrial and commercial minds in the fields of science and technology. <clears throat> it's something that the minister is emphasizing all the time, that we need more and more talent coming through the system when it comes to science, when it comes to mathematics. The many social ills attributed to this is the lack of access to quality maths and science education, school infrastructure and support systems. <clears throat> this has led to a whopping 60% dropout rate from universities and places of higher learning. Let's take this conversation forward and to tell us a little bit more about this, uh, we are joined by Professor Tandim Gwebi, who is the Head of Research at the University of the Western Cape, and Professor Tabelo Nyukong from, the, uh, uh, from Rhodes University, who is the recipient of the African Union Kwame Nkurma Scientific Award. Good to have both of you. Welcome to Morning Live. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Leon, and good morning to the listeners. Lovely. And very good morning to you as well. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Good morning. Absolute pleasure. I want to start off just by touching on the 60% dropout rate. I mean, that is a, that's a massive level. What's contributing to this? Leon, there are many factors. If I can give a little bit of background, uh, you've, you've realized that in the past there's been massification of higher education, which means an increase in enrollments globally particularly in South Africa where we wanted education to be less exclusive. And unfortunately one of the negatives has been that there are students who come to the system and they don't complete. It's either they take longer to complete or they don't complete at all. For example, there's statistics that shows that 45 up to 60 percent of students who enroll do not complete their degrees and they are nowhere to be found. And also the statistics that shows that students who were supposed to finish within three years, the three years, they take five years to complete. So there's been this high participation, but high attrition rates in higher education. And it's across the board. It's a big worry. I mean, that is a really big worry. When we are not, we're not producing um, the quality of scientists and the quantity of scientists because yes quality and quantity is vitally important as well because I mean this takes a lot of minds it takes a lot of great minds to work and, and when you say they disappear out the system is that it they're gone I mean they, you never see them again they never come back they never re-register and then they they just who knows where they go uh, but we don't really know where they go. I mean, I, I'm aware of the Department of Science and Technology study that was looking at postgraduate retention. So for those who have graduated and obtained their higher degrees, then they would come back and take on maybe honors or masters or doctoral degrees, sometimes after five years, sometimes after even ten years, which is due to a number of factors. But those who do not complete, they disappear, they're gone out of the system. Mm. All right, so let's let's talk to somebody who has excelled at this. I mean, pro Professor, you're one of the greatest science minds here uh, on the continent, and we and we talk about the fact that you won this uh, the African Union Kwame Nkrumah Scientific Award. I mean, studying science, excelling in science, what does it take? Um, I just want to start to talk to the listeners and say science is not a myth. It's not people in lab coats disappearing into the laboratory and never coming out. Science is every day. It's the air we breathe, it's the food we eat, it's, it's soccer, it's whatever we do in life, the medicine we do. And I have a passion that us as Africans must solve our own problems. Science is about solving our environment, making it better. It's about taking our mineral resources, getting 
making money out of them. It's about creating employment. I believe us as Africans, we have good scientific base. We should do this ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be consumers of low-class technology from other people. Our decisions will be made by other people. So I'm very passionate about Africa and Africans taking a lead in science. I, I, and that's nicely put because uh, every continent, every country has their specific problems and issues and it takes the people of that country, of that continent to solve them and to understand the workings of them and that's what's so important. Um, on a personal level, what, what was it that, that inspired you? What, what was it that made you fall in love with the sciences? Well, I can tell you, I didn't start off doing sciences at all. I thought I was going to be a social scientist, but then I got bored with the social science. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, uh, and so I went into the sciences with really two years of high school left. I, and I had tradition, uh, additional mathematics and all that. I think I just like the challenge of science. I like solving problems. I like to see things grow. Maybe I grew up as a shepherd. Maybe being on the farm there made me understand nature, which is also part of science. Understand the environment. Try to explain my environment. And I really, I, I couldn't look back again. It's, a, it's incredible because, I mean, what you're saying is that science is every day. Science is, this is science. Speaking into this microphone is science. Us being here is science. Science makes us who we are and what we do, As uh, to, to almost reiterate exactly what you've said. Is it, is it a lack of... Do you think it's the teaching skills that are at a problem? Are we, are we at a loss of, you know, if you have this unbelievable teacher that perhaps instills this love within the, 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 the pupils from a really young age, do you think that's what we need? Do you need them to start earlier and to ensure that that love of science carries our students through, our youth? Yes, certainly that's one of the factors. Uh, but, but uh, Leanne, we have to look at the bigger factors that are causing, I mean, if I can go back to why students are not completing, why we're not getting enough scientists, whereas we've got scientists who've got this passion, like Professor Nyokong, who've got the drive to, to, to develop capacity, and there are many of those instances when it where it happens. But the problem that has been identified, particularly if I refer to the to the dropout rates, is under, one of them is under preparedness. And people would come to higher education not prepared for higher education, but you must, uh, we must be aware that under preparedness doesn't mean lack of ability so that lack of that ability can be can be promoted by the young age introduction to science the the passion that we have how we communicate science in our communities so that that that's the that's the, the the point where we can also make an impact and change the situation I want to touch on something that I touched on with the minister a bit earlier and she, she looked shocked um, because I think it shocked the rest of us dropping this average rate to pass mathematics and, and here we are standing talking about how we need to lift the standard of education how we severely are lacking scientists, we're lacking mathematicians and we're lacking those that, that ability to solve problems because that's what it's all about, it's finding a solution to a problem but with a 20% aggregate in maths you know, I mean is that not automatically lower um, the rate of students that are coming through and saying, okay, well, I only need 20% to pass that, so I don't really need to worry about that. And what do you think that is going to do for us? How, how did you take that news? I, th I think it's unacceptable, but having said that, we need to look at the details of that statement. I was shocked myself when I, I listened to TV this morning that uh, there's this 20%, and we need to look at it, What, how is it going to implement it, what are the conditions, and even whatever conditions that are 20%, I think it's not acceptable, not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. If you think going to um, take on careers in, whether in science or in humanities, 20% mathematics yeah. is just not good. I mean, and you talk about a dropout rate at this rate, can you imagine how much worse it can get if, you, if you, you're admitting that? I mean, Professor, for you, the, the focus when you were, when you were studying, uh, and, and I'm taking you back because, because I feel that we need to inspire students out there. What was it that you did focus on? I mean, is it, a, is it a, uh, something that you're born with, this love for the sciences, the love for maths? Or can you actually begin to love it and take to it? Because a lot of people find it intimidating. Yes, yes, Leanne. But I would like to really comment on this 20%. I, 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 I want everyone to comment on it because I'm as shocked. We have a problem of this 100% pass rates in schools. 
you know, it doesn't matter what goes in. We, the obsession with 100% pass rate in school will continuously lower the mark so that we have that 100%. I'm totally opposed to it. 100% pass rate in what? That's the, that's the issue. Yes. So I have And how? How are you yeah. passing at 100%? If we all get 20%, are and you we, really passing? And we say we've passed and we, we paid ourselves. I'm sorry. It's not good enough. Uh, I don't think anybody is born as a scientist. It's the environment you grow in. It's the nurturing you grow in that, that makes you a scientist. In a way, I grew up like a boy, but that, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's, it's your teachers in school who can inspire science in you, who can inspire the love of maths. I love maths right from uh, when I was in primary school. And in high school, as I said, uh, I, I fell in love again. So it's, it's really also the teachers. I mean, when I moved from social science humanities to science, the teachers should have been met with two years of high school left. In, we, these days we would say 100% pass rate, we won't allow her because it means the pass rate will be down because she's starting science from the beginning and so on. But the school, the teachers, everybody believed this is her passion. Give her a chance. Let's see what happens. Here I am. Yeah. That, it's amazing. What did you win your award for? Is it just a lifetime achievement award really that you do get that? Yeah, lifetime is a dangerous word because I have many lives. <laughs> We use it quite flippantly these days, don't we? <laughs> yes. No, it's, it's really an academic excellence award. It's, it's, and I need to clearly state, it has nothing to do with being a woman. You happen to win, to be a woman who won the award. And that, to me, is very important to state. Um, and and it's, ab it's about research, about supervision, about, it's about quality of science on the African continent. The award is about quality what are we providing and promoting the science in the continent and that is what the award is about listen ladies i'm so proud of both of you for doing what you're doing and especially for women because you know women are still growing in this industry and to see a recipient who won the award not because you're a woman but because you're a fantastic scientist and that's what's important and thank you so much for talking to us here on morning live some issues that are affecting all of us professor uh tandim kwebi from the head of research at the university of the western cape and professor tabelo nukong from rhodes university is the recipient of the African Union Nkwame Nkurma Scientific Award. Quick break, more after this. Do stay.